get out on that ice and head south. You'll find a marine perimeter, but get out and move. Well, there's, I tried to get out of the sleeping bag and passed out, so I knew I wasn't going anywhere. And the driver said, I, I called to him and said, I hear shooting up front and yelling. He is all for burning the trucks. And I said, well, where are they taking the wounded? He is they're not, that's a shooting. Any of them try to climb out of the fire, they shoot them. When they got to our truck, the driver, he didn't want to burn. So he told them off, really told them off, shouting at them. And there was one pow, and he was quiet. He wouldn't have to burn. We could hear him rattling around the gas tanks, but our truck was so shot up, everything had drained out in the road hours before, so they couldn't get a fire going there. One started walking around the truck, one shot in each head under the truck. Another stood at the tailgate and started shooting, one shot in each man there. One climbed up in the side, in the middle of the back, leaned over for a better aim and started shooting. And I'm watching and I felt proud. I get to fight with these guys. One by one, they're taking their shot there's no shouting, no yelling, no pleading for help, nothing. They just look at their executioner, take their shot. I push myself up to sit there and watch what's happening. And when the rifle moved from shooting the man next to me, moved toward my head, I could look up the rifle barrel, look my executioner in the eye, see the trigger squeeze, and the muzzle blast knocked me flat. Then they drug me over to the pile of dead and threw me on top. And out of the corners of my eyes, I could see them picking up the rifles. And I thought, okay, now I get shot. Lord, here I come. But I wasn't worth a bullet. They started using rifle butts on me, pounding me everywhere, mostly in the head with rifle butts. But they pounded till they were sure I was dead, but I was still conscious. They'd really worked me over, but I could still hear them and out of the corner of my eyes see them. But everything was red from blood in my eyes. But one of them grabbed a handful of hair and lifted my head to look in the face and see. And I thought, don't breathe, it'll freeze in the air. Don't move anything, relax everything, stare down the road, and I did. He threw the head down and wiped his hand off from the back of my jacket and grunted something I figured was, yeah, this one's gone too. And I peeked at him leaving and they left going up and when they disappeared in blowing snow, I rolled and slid down off the pile. And I thought, well, I'll start crawling. And I started crawling. When I got out on the ice, I could feel the hardness under me cleared a patch, looked at that beautiful ice, and said, well, Lord, thank you, you got me this far. Then in the middle of the night, I could remember the songs I learned as a boy in Sunday school. And I sang, the lowly to myself each syllable, I'd move an arm or a leg, willing it to go. And I kept moving, till I saw on the other side some green moving. If it was a GI, he could help me. And a GI did come up in the ice, he walked slowly toward me, holding his stomach, so I knew where he had been hit. He said, Marines are coming with two Jeeps. And I set up to watch, watch them grow bigger and bigger on the ice, till they came up and rolled up in this Jeep circle and stopped right beside me, this Lieutenant Colonel, but he got out and squatted down so he could look me eye to eye about six inches away so he could see if I was understanding. He said, son, where you hurt so I don't hurt you more. 